Hello everyone and welcome to another lesson on fundamentals of robotics. In this lesson you will learn about holonomic and non-holonomic constraints for robots. So let's get started. By the end of this lesson you will learn that holonomic or um, configuration constraints will reduce the dimension of the C space of the robot which in turn reduces the degrees of freedom of the robot. If you haven't watched our videos on configuration and the topology of the configuration space and also the degrees of freedom, be sure to watch the previous videos because some of the concepts are prerequisites for this lesson. On the other hand, <coughs> we also have non-holonomic constraints. Non-holonomic constraints are, types, uh, are a type of velocity constraints that doesn't reduce the dimension of the C space or uh, the number of degrees of freedom of the robot, but in turn, they will reduce the possible velocities. Let's see this with an example. Remember our four, uh, famous four bar linkage with one degree of freedom? If you don't, please refer to the lesson um, on degrees of freedom of the robot. For now, consider a four bar linkage that has four links Remember that ground is a link, right? This um, linkage, as we saw in the previous video, it has only one degrees of freedom and the two ends are pinned to the ground. Since it has only one degree of freedom, then the configuration space or the C space has only one dimension. For a complete lesson on configuration space, including topology, refer to our uh, video on um, configuration space and the representation of the configuration space. It's super difficult to represent the configuration space with only one parameter. A viable option is an implicit representation of the C space that is embedding the configuration space in a higher dimensional Euclidean space subject to constraints. The best common approach to represent the C-space of the closed-loop mechanisms is to represent the C-space by the joint angles subject to loop closure constraints. These constraints are called holonomic constraints and they will reduce the number of degrees of freedom of a mechanism. For the four bar linkage example, the configuration space can be represented by for dimensional joint space subject to three loop constraints. In order to find the loop constraints for the four bar linkage, please note that the tip of link four always coincides with the origin and the orientation of link four is always horizontal. We can also visualize this with a four link serial robot that the tip of the force link always coincides with the origin and the orientation of the force link is always horizontal. We can then write the three loop closure equations like this. The two are for the position and the last one is for the orientation. You can understand this by visualizing that after going around the loop, the final position and orientation must be equal to the initial position and orientation. These loop closure equations are called holonomic constraints and they reduce the C space dimension and thus the degrees of freedom of a mechanism. Therefore, the one-dimensional C space of the four-bar linkage can be implicitly represented by embedding a four-dimensional space of joint angles subject to three constraints. In general, if we write the in-dimensional vector of robot configuration as the column vector Q, which belongs to Rn, then the loop closure equations for k independent equations that are our k holonomic constraints can be written in the vector form as you can see here. Each of the rows uh, is one of our equations and g is a function of q, uh, q1 to qn which are the generalized coordinates. Note that k is always um, smaller or equal than n and gq belongs to a k-dimensional space. 
The k-independent constraints that we just saw are called holonomic or configuration constraints. And they are constraints that reduce the dimension of the C space. Then the dimension of the C space or degrees of freedom can be found by deducting k from n, which k is the number of the, uh, the independent constraints and n is the dimension of the joint variable space. If the robot is moving, and the configuration of the robot is time dependent, the question is how these holonomic constraints restrict the velocity of the robot. If we take g as a function that maps the n-dimensional space of the joint variables to the k-dimensional space of the uh, holonomic constraints, then differentiating both sides with respect to time and then rearranging the equations, we will get to the uh, velocity or Fafian constraints in the form of aq q dot equal to zero, in which q dot i is the joint i velocity. These are called Fafian constraints or velocity constraints, and there are two conditions here. If it is possible to integrate the velocity constraints, then they are called holonomic or integrable or configuration constraints that um, reduce the dimension of the C space of the robot and thus the number of degrees of freedom of the robot. But if the velocity constraints cannot be integrated to get the configuration constraints, they will be called uh, non-holonomic constraints. And non-holonomic constraints do not um, reduce the dimension of the C space of the robot, but they will reduce the space of the possible velocities. Now let's see what non-holonomic constraints are with some of some examples. The first example is the chassis of a car driving on a plane. Um, suppose that phi is the chassis angle or the steering angle. A simple pass of the car depending on this angle can be like this. Then the configuration of the chassis can be defined by, by this steering angle and the location of the point halfway between the real wheels. Suppose that V is the forward velocity of the car. Then the velocities in the x and y direction can be written as x dot is equal to V cosine phi and y dot equal to V sine phi. Note that because the motion of the car on a plane is a two-dimensional motion, we will have velocities in the x and y direction. From the second equation, we can find the forward velocity as y dot divided by sine phi. And substituting this equation into the first equation and rewriting the equation in the form of Fafian constraint, we can find the following, uh, following equation in the form of velocity constraints. So by inspection, we can see that this velocity constraint cannot be integrated to give an equivalent configuration constraint, and thus it's a non-holonomic constraint. Note that non-holonomic constraints reduce the vehicle's possible velocities. That means that the vehicle cannot slide directly to the side, but they cannot reduce the space of configurations, which means that for the example of the car, sideway motions can be achieved by parallel parking. Second example is steerable needles. Steerable needles are a type of medical device that can be steered to reach a target location. If you haven't watched our videos on steerable needles, be sure to watch them. The steerable needles are also an example of non-holonomic systems, where they cannot instantaneously reach sideways motions, but can be steered to any configurations in their configuration space. Another classical problem is an upright coin rolling on a plane without slipping. Consider a coin with radius r that's rolling on a plane without slipping. This coin can be subject to both holonomic and non-holonomic constraints. Uh, holonomic, uh, as we know before, holonomic constraints can reduce the C-space dimension and thus the, um, the degrees of freedom of the mechanism.
In this case, the disk is confined to the X and Y plane and cannot move in the Z direction. And rotating the disk around Y will make it lose its upright position. So the disk has two holonomic constraints. Therefore, it has four degrees of freedom. The rolling disk is also subject to non-holonomic constraints. If we take the four DC space coordinates as x, y, phi, and theta, in which phi is the rotation around z, which is also called the steering angle or heading angle, and theta is the rotation around x, which is also orientation with respect to vertical, then uh, the velocities in the x and y direction can be found by x dot equal uh, to r theta dot cosine phi and y dot equal to r theta dot sine phi. Note that from physics we know that the corn rolls in the direction indicated by cosine phi and sine phi with the forward speed r theta dot. Then we can write the Fafian constraints in thus form. Note that these Fafian constraints are not integrable too. You can easily find this um, with a simple calculation. And thus, they are non-holonomic constraints. These constraints reduce the dimension of the system's feasible velocities, but don't reduce the dimension of the reachable C space. The rolling coin can reach any point in its 4D C space despite the two constraints on its velocity. In summary, holonomic constraints are constraints on the configuration and they reduce the space of the configurations and thus the degrees of freedom. Non-holonomic constraints are constraints on the velocity and they don't reduce the space of configurations. Fafian constraints can be holonomic or non-holonomic based on the integrability of the velocity constraints. A system can be subject to both non-holonomic and holonomic constraints. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I also hope that you get a good understanding of the difference between non-holonomic and holonomic constraints. Be sure to send us an email with your feedbacks on how to improve our lessons. See you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.